I'm going to talk about something a little different. You know, Joe and Trevor both spoke about uh, exponential growth, and they both spoke about how as we move into exponential growth of humanity, we really need to rethink how education systems are delivered around the world because one of the, the big issues that we're going to have is that you know, the demand for educated workforces around the world will continue to rise. And we don't have the infrastructures and the systems uh, to accommodate that. So my talk today is, can virtual and augmented reality democratize education? And let's find out if it can or not. So the first slide, please. We can advise organizations, big and small, on their go-to-market strategy with this technology. How do you use this technology? How do you bring it into your organization? We focus on marketing, retail, e-commerce, education, and training. I'm also a mentor with Techstars. I'm a VRAR, a Virtual and Augmented Reality Association advisor, chair, and speaker. I was a judge for the South by Southwest pitch competition, which was pretty cool. Can you go back one slide? Somebody's humming, but can you go back one? Um, anyway, so I was a, a judge for the uh, South by Southwest uh, Awards, and so basically it's a pitch competition where uh, hundreds of startups apply, so I had to go through literally step by step and review all of these startups, which is a real honor. I also was a judge for the Augie Awards, which the Augie Awards, so whoever's humming in the background, can you mute yourself? <laughs> Um, I was also uh, a TEDx speaker on the marriage of technology and education. So I, I've had the distinct honor of you know, not only making this technology, but also evangelizing it around the world. So next slide. My personal mission in life is to inspire and educate future leaders to think and act in a socially, economically, and environmentally sustainable way. Next slide. I think we're going to be one slide. Yeah, there we go. So that's my personal mission. And what I realized early on uh, in 2014 when I got to try VR for the first time, I realized that this is not only a really cool thing for video games, but transcends our communication mediums now. So for example, we have Skype, We've got, you know, I'm actually doing this presentation right now almost, you know, instead of being in VR, I'm actually in a 2D screen, you know, but if I was in VR, the sense of presence of being inside the headset and standing with all of you and looking around at everybody here, there's something special and magical. And, you know, right now, everybody's avatar is, you know, Joe is kind of the only one that looks like himself and you've got some robots and you've got some people there, but as these avatars become more photorealistic, as they become more representative of ourselves, this will be the medium by which we communicate with people. The new headsets are starting to come online with eye tracking, so you'll be able to look at somebody and feel that they're looking at you. You'll be able to have haptics, so when you reach out and give them a handshake, you'll be able to feel the handshake back. You'll be able to smell the environment you're in. And being able to hijack everybody's senses is kind of the start of a new way of experiential learning. So next slide, please. I knew what I knew. These are my daughters, Holly and Abby. Holly on the left is 10 years old. She's about to be uh, 11 um, next month. And Abby is uh, 14 years old. She's in grade nine, so you know, I don't really exist anymore. But my passion comes from these two. My, my fear that, I, that wakes me up every morning is that if we don't fundamentally change how we educate our youth now to instead of go to get jobs, or what job do you want? Well, what job you want is irrelevant to society in jobs that are being decimated and created on a daily basis. The bigger picture thinking in this is what problem do you want to solve? What contribution to society do you want to give? 
And you know, I want to be able to instill, instill these types of mindsets in my children, but also in children around the world, because I think if we can harness mindset training over skill set, doesn't matter what the skills are of the jobs of the future, if it's coding, if it's culinary arts, if it's hospitality, if, if it's mining, it doesn't matter what the job is, if you have the right mindset, you can solve the world's biggest problem. Can you advance the slide? No, maybe? Okay, so the technologies that we're really kind of interested in right now, there's tons of technologies coming aboard. There's molecular genetics, there's all sorts of technologies, but if you take kind of the top ones right now, artificial intelligence, 5G, virtual and augmented reality, quantum computing, and blockchain, each one of these technologies individually is revolutionary. Revolutionary, I mean, these are game-changing technologies on their own, but they don't exist on their own. They exist in an ecosystem that they all work interchanged with each other. I'm not sure who's talking in the background. Can you mute yourself? It's that one over here. <laughs> okay, mute you. Bye. There you go. You got me. The robot got muted. There we go. Thank you. That was awesome. Hey. All right. <laughs> so strange. This is so weird. We're in a virtual world on a flat screen. Ah! So sometimes the technology doesn't work properly, but that's okay. The technology is what. This is a great example of how we have all of these technologies at our fingertips and none of them work properly. Yet. It's true. You have artificial intelligence, it does some things. It can give you better Netflix movies to watch. You know, 5G is coming online, it's not really here yet. Uh, VR and AR it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Quantum computing is a, is a bit of a pipe dream, but we still have developments being done. And blockchain, well, it was great until it wasn't, and now it's going to be great again. So all of these technologies are right there at the cusp of being uh, useful. And when I say useful, I mean useful at scale. So being able to take your, your virtual and augmented reality worlds, run them on blockchain, and then push them out on 5G, you know, running AI-driven avatars, all in the background running cloud services that are based on, uh, on quantum computing. That's the way this is going to play out. All of these technologies are going to coalesce together. And my opinion is that if we can take all of these technologies as they mature, as they progress, and apply them to one thing, and one thing that we need more than anything is education. So next slide. So if you look at this slide here, this is a pretty simple graph. Uh, linear growth versus exponential growth. Our entire education system, our entire world, up until this point has been based on linear growth. And linear growth, as you can see, the, the line kind of grows up and we've been, you know, for the last 100 years, we've been growing very fast on a, you know, a very, very fast incline of linear growth. What we have never contemplated as humanity, and especially in the education systems, is exponential growth. And like I said with the, the previous technology example, if we were just to continue each one of those individually, we would continue on a nice linear path and it would grow nice and steady. We'd be able to figure that out as humanity. The problem is, in the next 5, 10, 20 years, within 20 years, my guess is, all of these mature, all of these technologies mature and we hit the exponential curve. And this exponential curve goes straight up, and then what? Nobody knows what, what comes next. Ten years ago, we didn't have smartphones. Twenty years ago, we didn't have the internet. Let that sink in. We didn't have smartphones ten years ago. App developer wasn't a job. Now there's millions and millions of app developers. VR and AR developer wasn't a job four years ago. Now it's a job in high demand. What's the next thing? AI developers? Uh, 
<laughs> Here's a crazy stat. The top 40% of income earners, and this is in the US, spend almost five times as much on their children's education as the bottom 60% of income earners do. While those in the top 20% spend about six times as much as those in the bottom 20%. That means rich people spend six times more money on education for their children. What do you think that does to the democratization of education? It doesn't allow it to thrive. You know, sending your kids to Harvard is a fantastic idea. Wonderful. But how many people can actually do that in the world? So how do we take Harvard-like education or Stanford and give them the networks and education? And it's already happening. You're seeing a democratization on the internet of things like Coursera, Udemy, Udacity, uh, EDX, Khan Academy. You can pretty much learn anything online now. The difference is it, it's not available to everybody equally. And that's where I think virtual and augmented reality will allow people to have access to the world's best teachers at any given time as an avatar, as an AI-driven avatar that gives them the information that they need in the way that they learn the best. And that's where this technology can really lift off. Next slide. So how big is the education market? In the next 10 years, it'll be a $10 trillion industry. Let that sink in for a second. $10 trillion industry. Right now, it's about $5, five trillion. Sorry, $6 trillion. Trillion with a T. So this is the global expenditures of governments, individuals, personal education, and private school. This is all of the education. This is what we spend as a, as a world in education every year. And it's... It's growing exponentially. So if we're going to spend this much money, we need to be able to get the maximum amount of benefit out of it. Next slide. Crazy stat. 60%, 65% of grade one children will end up working in jobs that don't yet exist. So we, we have a, a young person here in the, in the audience. How old are you? You're 12 years old, almost 12 years old. So by the time you graduate, the jobs that exist right now are going to be radically different. You figured? He knows. He figured. All right. So, how do you feel about that? Yeah. Come here. Come here. Hold on. I'm bringing this little guy up here. What's your name? Aditya. Come on here. Right. This is amazing. We've got a, a young man here, he's 12 years old, and he's going to explain to us why he's not scared of change. Hi, I'm talking on a mic in a virtual world, which is great. Um, I am not scared of change because of the fact that change is good. When has change ever taken a turn for the worse? Humankind is great right now. The bunch of people sitting here videotaping me happily with a cup of coffee and a computer and other stuff but when has change ever uh, took us to a bad point if humankind is um let's say as intelligent as we are in the as we will be in the future who says that um, maybe humankind will improve um, by a uh, lot, and we will eventually just become smarter. That's why I'm not scared of change, and change is great. And I hope in the future that I have one of those jobs that don't exist, because I would prefer not to be the type of teacher my mom is and teaching in okay. real time, and I would more prefer to um, teach in a virtual environment with one of these weird robot people. I weird robot person. Can you send an emoji? Weird robot person? No, the one in front of the screen. No, you. No, yeah, you. Okay, thank you. Amazing. Amazing. So there's an example of the future of where we're all going with this and the reason why we should all be working our butts off 
to make education better. So next slide, please. I think you're getting lots of applause here. Are we, are we getting some love? Show some love here. Show some emoji love. Awesome. Yay. Awesome. Okay. So I don't know who's standing in front of me on the screen here, but there we go. So the question is, can virtual and augmented reality democratize education? Next slide. Dun, dun, dun. The answer is, it already is. And the reason why I say this is because people around the world in virtual and augmented reality are working on some incredible technologies to help educate us faster, to help give us more effective education. Walmart introduced VR training across the entire enterprise. They ordered 17,000 VR headsets. You think Walmart decided just on a whim to buy some VR headsets? No, they did a pilot study, they did a second pilot study, they did a third pilot study. They proved that virtual reality increases retention rates and decreases error rates across the enterprise in ways seen results of up to 40 to 50 percent increases in retention rates, 25 percent decreases in training times, and this is why Walmart uh, is one of the major corporations investing heavily in virtual reality training. And if this is the kind of results that corporations are seeing, let's translate this to school systems. So next slide, please. We're going to move through this next part quick because I know you're all interested in moving on. So. This was a, a prototype that we, uh, we had started working on back in 2016, and the idea was to be able to take a box, drop it in a, in a school, and have everybody kind of interact with VR together. Next slide. So that was in 2016. Fast forward to 2019, and HTC Vive introduced their standalone unit of the Vive uh, Focus, and they've introduced a school kit called Vive EDU. And it uh, interacts, and all of the headsets are next slide. And they can do up to 500 people simultaneously. Next slide. Yeah, there we go. They can do up to 500 people simultaneously learning together in virtual worlds. Oh, go back one. Must be a delay. All right, well, it doesn't matter. They can do a lot of people in virtual worlds together synchronized, and this is really exciting. You know, this is the beginning of how we can take people in a classroom to places around the world. We can put you inside a human body. Next slide. Here are some of the experiences, the best ones so far. You can take a journey into the human brain. You can actually go in VR and travel to places that you would never be able to go to. Next slide. This is called Nanome, and it allows you to take any molecule and see it in virtual reality and then visualize it, but also see what two molecules, how they interact, and you can also make changes to the molecules. Why is this important? Well, as we move into you know, artificial intelligence and quantum computing, doing studies for drugs, we're going to be able to create new molecules and test them using AI algorithms at scale to figure out will these be useful for treating different, uh, different diseases. And this will hyper-accelerate our discovery of new drugs. Next slide. How about learning how to drive an excavator? This is a company out of Toronto called Career Labs. And they built uh, a system in VR where you can literally learn how to drive an excavator. I spent 30 minutes in this, and I could probably go and drive an excavator today. I wouldn't be very good at it. I, I wrecked that, that dump truck. But uh, I learned how to drive an excavator in virtual reality. There's ones for crane training. There's ones for plumbing. There's ones for welding. Next slide. How about frog dissection? So this is a, a company called Victory XR out of the US, and they started creating some really cool uh, experiences in virtual reality. And one of them that they did was this frog, because a lot of students don't want to dissect frogs. They don't feel 
write about it. They don't feel comfortable with it. And this is every bit the same as the frog dissection in the class. So they've actually made this available as a, uh, a board certified alternative to cutting up frogs. The only thing that's missing is the smell. But for mild to high smell, This is Nefertari's tomb in Egypt. So a friend of mine, <clears throat> Simon, went into this tomb. It's an actual tomb in Egypt. He took thousands of photographs and recreated it in virtual reality. So not only can you stand there and kind of look around, but you can move, you can look in every crevice underneath the, the hidden, there's a hidden doorway. You can hold a flashlight and look around. It's really an incredible. The only thing that's missing, again, is the smell and the cold, because it's cold in there. Really, really amazing, and that's available on Steam right now. Next. Apollo 11. This is an incredible experience uh, by a company called Immersive VR Education out of Ireland. And what they did was they created a simulator where you are a pilot or an astronaut in the Apollo 11 mission, and you have to kind of land the, the lunar module on the moon. Uh, this is the first time in virtual reality that I cry. I, I, when you go up into space, it, it kind of it takes you up in the shuttle and it, it feels all real. And then there's one scene where you're just kind of in space and the Earth is in front of you. And then the sun crests over the Earth. And the, the music's very thematic. But that moment, I actually cried because it was so powerful. I felt like I was right there watching the sun crest over the Earth. It was emotional. Next. Vieto. So this is a company, uh, again, that is working on uh, K-12 to education components. And one of them is uh, being able to look at the heart, the brain, uh, the skeletal system, and being able to look at all of these things in virtual reality. And being able to walk around a human heart, I did this a few years ago in VR. I, I stood in front of a human heart that was, you know, it was uh, three or four feet big, large. And I walked around it, I walked inside of it, and I could see the aorta, I could see all of the parts of the human heart and I will never forget that experience. And I think this kind of three-dimensional learning really sets the bar for the next generation and how they're going to learn. Next. This is called Hololab by a company called Shell Games. And what they did was they took chemistry and gamified it. So what you have to do is you have to actually take chemicals and mix it and make a new reagent and you have to follow the instructions. But it's like a game show. So what they did was they made this game show where it's, it's timed and you got to do it quick and you got to learn it and you got to be right. And they gamified the idea of science education. It's really incredible. The, the Shell Games is doing an amazing job at taking the, uh, the gaming industry um, ideas of gamification, of you know, social aspects, of um, you know, being able to live stream it, and then putting it to education. It's incredible. Next slide. Here's another one. This one is, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called actually, sorry. This is another uh, anatomy um, piece where you can stand there and you can actually pull the pieces off and learn real time as you disassemble this, the skeleton. And it's everything, it's the heart, skeleton, brain, every part of the human body. Uh, you can pull it apart and learn every single piece and then put it back together. Um, this is, I wish they had this when I was trying to remember all the bones in the body. And, I took kinesiology back in university, and this would have been much, much. How about holding the entire solar system in your hand? This is a product called Merge Cube, and it's a very inexpensive $20 foam cube that when you pair it with your phone, you can now have the solar system or the human heart or a skull. It can be anything, and it's in augmented reality, so you point your phone at it, it doesn't require a headset, and now you can learn about the solar system in the palm of your hand, or also as an open APK, so educators can start programming things that they want to see on this beautiful foam cube, and it's called Merge Cube. Next. So this is something that is outside of kind of traditional education. 
Uh, I don't know how many people have been to the Anne Frank House or read the, the stories. Um, this is the second time I cried in virtual reality. Uh, this I've actually been to the Anne Frank House, and it's, it's a bit of a gong show. You line up for an hour, and you kind of go through. You don't really get much of the story. Being in VR and having the story told to you, and being standing there and then looking at the artifacts, looking at the letters, and looking at out the window, and having the story told to you of this little girl who lived through the Holocaust, uh, and she didn't make it, but her luckily her her memoirs lived on, uh, and this is this is something that really touched me. And, you know, I've been there. I, I read the story, and it didn't touch me as much as when I was in the VR, experiencing what it's like to be in a six-foot room, and that's where you live. It was uh, really emotional. Thanks. Yeah. There is so much content being made. Some of it's good, some of it's not. Uh, there's a, a friend of mine, Steve Bambury. He is kind of positioning himself as the, the global expert on virtual and augmented reality education. And Steve has uh, a blog, uh, Virtually, Virtually Teach. Um, the link will be in the next slide. But uh, he is doing an amazing job at collecting all the best content from around the world and giving you a direct link to find it. So he's got it on his uh, on his blog now. A thousand educational 360 videos that you can show to your classroom. A thousand. Some are good, some are bad, but a thousand on there. So next slide. It is breathtakingly beautiful, Sir David Attenborough. David Attenborough just was in a, uh, a bunch of VR activations, or VR um, products, I guess, would be a, the best way to describe it. He's really seen the value of this, and he's putting his full weight behind this. And being able to go in and learn about a dinosaur and pick up the bones as David Attenborough is standing as a hologram in front of you explaining those bones and being able to manipulate them and then see it grow around you into full size. There's something magical about having David Edinburgh, you know, talk to you first of all. But in VR, it feels like he's talking to you. And the stuff that these people are making is really the future of education. And if we're just scratching the surface of what's possible. Next slide. So these are the featured experiences that I uh, I showed just a minute ago. And as you can see. These are just very, you know, top-level smattering of the great work that labs and educators and developers around the world are doing right now to take all sorts of different education, from emotional, empathy-driven education to anatomy to career preparation. The democratization of education is here. It's just not at scale yet. So I would encourage everybody here to take this list, learn from it, and think how can I create new education modules that can be pushed out to these headsets, because these headsets are going to get cheaper and more effective and better, and they're going to be more prevalent, they're going to be ubiquitous in the next five to ten years. So how can I, how can you build these things to democratize education? Next slide. You can. You probably want to take a screen grab of this next one here. So here's how, um, here's some of the ways you can kind of start to learn more on an ongoing basis. These are some of the blogs that we follow, the podcasts, the reports. So Upload VR, Road to VR, VR Scout, Inside the AR, Our Own Metaverse One, Virtual Reality, Pulse, Scarred Ghost, XR Portal. These are all great places for you to, to uh, sign up. And then you'll get you know kind of weekly, daily updates on what's happening in the industry to keep you abreast of all of this information. If you're interested in on the reporting side, you know, if you're trying to raise money, all the reports on the right are kind of the you know how big the market size and that sort of thing. But um, really, really amazing uh, resources. When we started in virtual and augmented reality, there were no resources. We had to make them up. It was you know four years ago there was nothing. People here's a headset. And you're like, well, what do I do with it? What do you do? Now we know. We know what makes what makes sense, what's comfortable, how to program for it, how to get it out there. We have distribution channels. We have all sorts of different headsets. The time is now to start using this technology to make education available to everyone in the world. 
Thank you very much. Next slide.